The name of the ACA and BSU is Center for Food Technology and Research. And that is what we call SEFTA. And it's basically for prevention of post-harvest losses. It's been shown repeatedly by publications and through research that more than 30 to 60% of all foods that we produce is lost due to poor post-harvest handling. And therefore, we consider that this is a very serious problem that needs the attention of all that are concerned with food security around the world. The aim of the project was to train manpower, MSc and PhD, to solve the problem of post-harvest losses. We suffer a lot of wastage this year. So the SEFTA mandate is to see how we can control that. Maybe by value addition, preservation. We insist that whatever project that is coming up, you're either processing or you're adding value. And all those things are issues that can help us in mitigating post-harvest losses. We have been able to engage researchers, both in West Africa and in Nigeria in particular, in the area of post-harvest losses, and they have been able to identify a lot of technologies that we are now using to help farmers to improve shelf life of their crops. One of our basic problems with agri-produce is that of uh, drying. The method that I use here for drying, they are local methods, uh, which are, I consider to be very unhygienic and unprofessional. First, we consider issues of a system that would work for that. And then we came up with the, the system you are seeing here. This is a master's degree project on the design and development of a grain dryer. To solve the problem of post-harvest losses as is caused as a result of poor drying system that farmers in the village experience. If you go to the rice mills, this technology would be a breakthrough for many businesses beyond farmers. I came up with uh, this freeze dryer. It uses low temperature for drying. Like for tomatoes, can be dried with the freeze dryer at a temperature of minus two degrees Celsius. Paper at a temperature of minus 1.5 degrees Celsius. And okra at a temperature of minus 1.4 degrees Celsius. So with this freeze dryer, it's easy to dry vegetables during rainy season. What that means is that this food is not going to be wasted again as it used to be. Now you're going to process it to be able to even sell it in a form that people would prefer to buy it. I deem it necessary to work on mango because we have a lot of mangoes abundant in the country and because we don't have processing, storage and all the other issues that are connected to post-harvest losses, they spoil. As a result, I deem it necessary to work on mango in order for me to use that technology, go back to give to my country. This place have trained me and I have practically successfully produced biscuits from sweet potato, which can also be done with any other crop. And there are lots of other uh, products, new products that we can we de develop from our local crops and you know, extend their shelf lives. So from here, I'm prepared for the industry. This kind of program doesn't exist in my country and in other sub-regions. And I believe coming here to study has opened up new horizons for me and new, and new knowledge, which I can go back and uh, deliver to the farmers and even to my government. The students have been trained in such a way that you don't need to be an employee. You have to be an employer of labor. That is why after the whole classwork, we send them to industries and internship for about three months. And what they do here is production of edible oil from soybean. What we have learned so far is the practical aspect of what we were, we were taught in class, that's the theory. Because we were taught the method of extraction, which the one they use here is solvent extraction method. And we are, we are also taught the chemistry that happens during the refining of the oil in the neutralizer. We have also seen how that happens when the phospho, um, phosphoric acid is added into the oil, how the gums break. We've also seen that and I think 
to a large extent, we've learned a lot. Since I've uh, been here, I've been able to bridge the gap between what I've learned in the class as a food scientist and then what is obtainable in the industry.